The brush fluttered across the paper easily and without tension, the fingers holding it did not tremble, as if the instrument was an extension of the hand. The ink lay evenly, smoothly, and the elegant, complex hieroglyphs of the art of Fuinjutsu bloomed on the white surface. Naruto put down her brush and examined the work critically. Calligraphy has always calmed her since early childhood. When it was necessary to put her thoughts in order, to cool her rebellious feelings, the girl sat down at the table and took a piece of paper, where, under the guidance of her teacher, she studied the art of seals. Teacher Naruto was four years old when she accidentally fell down the stairs at the orphanage and hit her head hard. And she ended up there. In some strange catacombs. High stone walls with incomprehensible symbols went far away and were lost somewhere in the darkness. The entire floor was covered with water. But for some reason Naruto didn't drown in it at all. Instead, she walked, walked where the incomprehensible call pulled her. In the middle of a huge hall with high ceilings stood a giant cage filled with darkness. This darkness was alive, it moved, sighed and sometimes growled strangledly, as if, as if it was trying to break free, to get to Naruto. The girl was not scared, not a bit. She boldly stepped inside the cage, squeezing between the thick bars. It was only later that she learned that she herself, voluntarily, handed over her mind and body to the demon. But then she just wanted to help the creature that suffered alone and in the dark. This is how she met Kurama. The fiery, nine-tailed fox demon first became her only interlocutor, then a friend, and then a mentor. He explained to her everything that Naruto didn't understand. For example, why do the people of the village hate her so much? And why at night, rarely, does she see a faceless silhouette in a white mask on the roof of the house next to the shelter? But even after that, Naruto was not going to give up. After all, not everyone treated her badly. Some shinobi fed her or gave her old weapons for her training, the guys at the orphanage loved and obeyed. Her life consisted not only of dark, but also bright days. And kind, truly responsive people. The owner of the mask shop could swear at her as much as he wanted, but Naruto knew that when she went to the shelter, the old woman from the small old house would definitely share apples with her for the other children or flowers to decorate the rooms. Just like that, because she is very kind. The world was not divided into black and white. It was huge, multicolored, colorful, and the girl wanted to find her place in it. Family, friends that she could take care of, that she could protect. And for this you had to study hard and try. Which is what she did. And the fox became her mentor. He explained to her the basics, where to start. Together they drew up a lesson plan and looked for those shinobi who could tell and show best. There was a cheerful, loud stomp of strong legs behind him, and someone jumped on Naruto and wrapped his arms around Naruto's neck. Naruto and Ichan, what are you doing? The rest of the kids from the orphanage surrounded the table looking at the symbols with curiosity. I do calligraphy, Naruto explained. Look, she took a brush and wrote several hieroglyphs. This is how your name is spelled, Toshi. And this is Mina, you see. She looks like a heron. The little blonde soda pointed his finger at one of the symbols of Mina's name. Just as clumsy and clumsy as Mina. Heron. Exactly, heron. The rest picked it up burying their noses almost in the leaf. Four-year-old Mina's lips trembled. Even her pigtails with blue ribbon seemed to have drooped. She clenched her fists so as not to burst into tears to the joy of the bullies. And this hieroglyph reminds me more of a crane, Naruto interjected. Look, here is a proud neck, and here are folded wings. The crane brings good luck and happy events. Mina wiped her eyes and looked hopefully at her older friend. Is it true? Yes, honey, it's true, Daybale. Naruto smiled. The boys looked at each other and jumped around the table. What about me? How do you spell my name? An elderly woman in a long gray dress entered the room. She looked at the guys with a smile, and Naruto laughing. What do the children do? She asked quietly, but they heard her. The students ran up to her. Naruto is doing this. What's her name? Soda puffed up his cheeks funny trying to pronounce the difficult name. Legafia. Koji helped his friend and adjusted his glasses. Oh, I see. 
the woman nodded. Have you forgotten that you need to clean the games room and bedroom? She raised a stern eyebrow. The children drooped. No one wanted to clean up, but no one dared to argue with the head of the orphanage, Haruko-san absolutely everyone loved and respected her. Naruto stood up and clapped her hands to get everyone's attention. You know, last week I visited an old, abandoned training ground at the other end of Konoha. Uzumaki lowered her voice. The children approached her, fascinated. And I found these scrolls there. She showed a small, palm-length tube. They say there are some treasures hidden there. But you can print the scrolls only when they are all collected together. And I lost the rest somewhere in the rooms. Let's find treasures together? The children looked at each other and, with an enthusiastic squeak, rushed off to the common bedroom, where their narrow, old bed stood and personal belongings were scattered. Shinobi children mature earlier than their peers without chakra. This is determined by genetics. But even in this case, they are still just children who want to have fun and play. Find treasures and neutralize dangerous criminals. Did you really hide all those scrolls? Mrs. Haruko looked at Naruto with interest. Yeah, date bail. Even last week when you first mentioned cleaning. They looked at each other and laughed. Naruto, a married couple is coming today. They want to take away one child. The woman became serious. Naruto nodded in understanding, the amusement evaporating like steam over boiling water. All the children in the orphanage have one common big dream that one day adults will come for them. And they will become their family. No matter how warmly they were treated, it could not replace their home and loved ones. Naruto always smiled when another couple took their child from the orphanage with them. She smiled, happy for the one who was lucky. And at night she cried quietly into her pillow trying not to be heard by her roommates. Because it's a shame. Because you also want someone to smile at you, and for your mother to take you by the hand, leading you away from the playground. Naruto didn't know how to be sad for long. If she can't be the child who gets taken away, then why can't she be the parent who cares? So, albeit for a short time, the children will have an older sister. So today only one person will be chosen and Naruto will have to console the rest and convince them to smile. Because in such a situation you cannot be jealous. I'll go help them before they destroy everything here in a fit of enthusiasm. The girl smiled. Haruko-san nodded. The children were actually not so much cleaning as they were rummaging through things, looking for scrolls. This will not work. To make it easy to find treasures, the place must be clean, date bail. Uzumaki said sternly and was the first to start cleaning point two hours later, she brought tired lumps of mud on legs into the common bath. The children were no longer interested in anything, not even the scrolls they found. Naruto smiled slyly and took out a small package. The children perked up. She made the seals and a huge ball of water rushed into the bathroom. The room was filled with steam and the aromatic smells of medicinal herbs. The pupils began to shout and began to look at each other. The girl smiled. Her idea was a success. Especially for this purpose, I made my way to the hot springs and sealed some water from the onsen. The shelter could not take children there, but the water there was very relaxing and tonic. Let's undress and take our basins, date bail. We will have guests today. We can't appear to them like this. The children nodded and actively began to soap themselves. The smell itself has already relieved them of apathy and a bit of fatigue. Naruto rubbed them with a hard washcloth, inspected the ears and folds of the neck, and helped lather up the hair. And sometimes she splashed with water, immediately making an innocent face. True, she could not deceive anyone, the children were in a hurry to answer her in kind, and by the end of the bath the dress could be safely wrung out. Forty minutes later, the children, steaming, with shining eyes, red ears, and cheeks, lined up in a row in the common bedroom. Naruto handed each of them a stack of clean clothes that she had prepared in advance after leaving the bathroom for a while. Soon the clean, tidy students rushed downstairs to greet the guests, and Naruto tiredly wiped the sweat from her forehead. Her muscles ached as if she had been practicing elemental techniques all day. Her dress was wet, her hair was disheveled and some strands stuck out of her knee braid almost horizontally. You did a good job, Naruto. 
Haruko-sen entered the room. Now it wouldn't hurt for you to take a bath and change clothes. And hurry down. For what? The girl shrugged her shoulders at the last question. Naruto. The woman took a step forward, but stopped and bit her lip. Uzumaki shook her head sadly. You and I know very well, Haruko-san, that a demon will never be accepted into a family. Yes, I don't need it anymore. Naruto. The girl went to the window, squeezing the windowsill until her knuckles turned white. Children played in the yard, being careful not to get dirty. And they looked sideways at the gate. I used to dream that they would come for me and take me away. But now, you have become my family, and the shelter has become my home. She turned around, smiled, spreading her arms helplessly. And I'm happy, Haruko-san, date bail. The woman came up and put her hand on the girl's shoulder. Naruto almost reached the short teacher's chest. You're a smart girl, Naruto. You were the first to ask me to teach you to read. At less than three years old you were already quoting poems from memory. I watched you grow and learn. You could already become a genin or even a chunin, go to study in ANBU. They offered it to you. Why did you refuse? The girl shook her head. Sometimes it's better not to stand out, day bail. She answered seriously. At least for me. It's not easy to lose sight of me anyway. She smiled slyly. The woman laughed. At that moment, a married couple entered the gate, and the teacher went to calm the excited children. Naruto quickly took a contrast shower, changed into a clean dress, washed the wet one and hung it up to dry. And she stood in front of the full-length mirror. It seems that it was donated to the orphanage by Lady Fujimi, the wife of the daimyo of the Land of Fire. The shiny surface obediently reflected a tall for her age thin girl with protruding collarbones. As the same Kurama explained to her, she should not have gotten into her subconscious until her body was fully formed and strengthened, that is, until she was ten or eleven years old. Early contact with him affected the seal and stirred up the chakra focus, which in turn activated all the body's resources. And as a result, the girl looked about twelve or thirteen years old. Surprising, especially for her not quite seven. A thin, even skinny, ordinary girl with big blue eyes and antennae scars, three on each cheek. However, Naruto never really cared about his own appearance. Clean, tidy, and that's the main thing. The only thing she was really proud of was her braid. Thick, elastic, you could hardly wrap your hand around it. When loose, Naruto's hair almost reached the ground, flowing down in a thick, shiny wave of sunlight. The children loved to braid their hair and tie bows on them, which Naruto then took a long time to get rid of. The girl took out a box of sewing supplies from the closet and took the clothes that she had put aside two days earlier. It needed to be mended and ready to be worn again. There is no need for her to go down to those people at the gate. There is nothing waiting for her there. Haruko-sen believed that every girl should be able to cope with all household responsibilities. And she didn't want to hear about chakra, missions and so on. In her opinion, even if you were a thrice-famous kunoichi, your husband should not die of hunger in torn socks and unwashed panties. And she taught her pupils everything that could be useful to a young housewife. She even drove the boys into the kitchen, where she taught cooking lessons. After all, upon reaching the age of seven, if they manage to enter the academy, they will be considered independent, and will even be able to get their own housing. It was believed that at the age of seven, a young shinobi can already bear responsibility for his actions. Naruto was actually offered to enroll in NBU, study there, along with the others, so that he could later wear a mask. But something stopped her. Or rather, someone. Karama growled so loudly that the girl began to shake. Yes, she herself did not want to rush to conclusions. It would be better for her to take a closer look at what forces are operating in Kanoha and who is worth joining. This could affect her future life. The girl was mending Soda's t-shirt when a loud, bitter cry came from below. Began. Naruto put down her sewing, put the supplies back in the box so that some curious people wouldn't prick their noses everywhere, and went down to the first floor. A tearful Mina immediately rushed to her. Wanichan Naruto. Wanichan Naruto. 
Uzumaki picked up the girl and stroked the hair of the other children. They took Risa, Koji said. Risa was the name of the smallest girl with wonderful brown eyes. She didn't even speak yet, but she knew how to charm with just one look. However, this was to be expected everyone wants babies so that they can get used to the new home as soon as possible, and there will be no problems. Let's not be upset and be happy for our little sister. Naruto smiled, wiped away everyone's tears, and made them blow their noses. And to cheer you up, we will now all go to the training ground together and look at real combat training. Do you agree? The boys began to look at each other, their eyes lit up. Even Mina nodded vigorously. Haruko-san breathed a sigh of relief. But they won't let us in their crying. So let's wipe our noses, go and smile, date Bayo. Naruto was the first to go out into the yard. Let's stand in pairs, well. When this perky, well, was heard in the shelter. Most of the employees shuddered, because this word denoted another whim of the Uzumaki. Definitely cheerful and useful, but a very unexpected whim. The children lined up obediently, and Naruto led them to a distant training ground, where, as far as she knew, Anbu and Special Jonin from the Hokage's guard were training. At one time, she often ran there for explanations when she didn't understand something in the book. She was little and didn't know how to be shy so I became friends with them. She led the children along circuitous, less visible and popular roads, so that they would not find out how Naruto Uzumaki was actually treated in the village. We didn't see the universal hatred. In fact, it was strictly forbidden to approach the training ground during training you could inadvertently hit some lethal equipment. But Naruto, when she was younger, didn't think about it. It could appear at the most unexpected moment and therefore the soldiers installed a signal circuit. When someone crossed it, the training immediately stopped. Naruto. A shinobi in a wolf mask jumped towards her. Did you bring your kindergarten? This is not a kindergarten, date bail. Naruto stood up for the pouting children. These are future shinobi, defenders of our village. You'll see, they will surpass you, Genma-san. By the way, does Yado-san know that you took his mask? She inquired, narrowing her eyes. Shiranaginma snorted, his cheeks probably turning red, but since he still hadn't taken off his mask, Naruto couldn't say for sure. Genma? A tall man roared from afar. Give back the mask. Immediately. The children shuddered and clung to Naruto's feet. She smiled sunnily. Hello, Yado-san. We came to watch the training. The man stopped abruptly visibly embarrassed. Hey, Naruto. He scratched the back of his head. And then he smiled, which made the scars on his face look even more terrifying. The children hugged their legs tighter, but Naruto was not frightened by this picture. She was already used to it and even helped treat them, because adult shinobi ran away from doctors like fire. Only if you train with us, Naruto. A man in a mask that covered half his face and with disheveled gray hair jumped down from a tree towards them. Naruto turned to the children. So, guys, meet me. This is Shiranigan-ma-san. He is a special jonin. He knows how to spit some on. The children stared in admiration at the man who had not taken off his mask. He scratched the back of his head in embarrassment. This is Yado-san. He is an ANBU, protecting our Hokage. And this is Kakashi-san. He is the famous copy ninja. Wow. It sounded harmonious. The shinobi became dignified, seeing with what delight the children were looking at them. You can look, but just don't interfere, said Yado-san, who was secretly called the bear for his wild and passionate love of honey. Naruto took the children to a fallen log and sat them on it, having first spread out a blanket. And I got ready to watch. If Hitaki Kakashi was here, the sight promised to be amazing. Kakashi turned his head, waved to someone, and another shinobi in a mask and an ANBU vest jumped from the tree. He looked thinner than the others, slimmer, his long black hair was pulled back into a low ponytail, and the strands snaked down his back. Naruto looked in fascination at how the sun sparkled in them. For some reason, for the first time my heart began to beat like crazy. The stranger looked at the children, then nodded reluctantly. 
The Chidori sang in Kakashi's hands. The guy easily deflected the blow with his katana, jumped over the enemy and began to run. They jumped all over the training ground, throwing kunai with explosive seals and shurikens at each other. Sometimes a fatal wound was only a fraction of a second away. Naruto had never seen a more mesmerizing sight before. With her mouth slightly open, she watched every movement of the unfamiliar shinobi. How he bends, missing a blow, how quickly he spins, leaning on the ground, throwing kicks. The stranger almost played with Kakashi, easily threw him over himself, led him by the nose. His hair wasn't even disheveled, he didn't even sweat. The ANBU who had come up were already making a bet. Who would win? Suddenly the opponents stopped and put away their weapons. Draw, no one won, no one lost. The shinobi groaned in disappointment, while the children clapped, screamed and ran forward towards their new heroes. Naruto noticed with horror that a seal explosion had not gone off ahead. She pushed off from the tree, several meters ahead of her charges, grabbed a kunai with a few attached to it, and threw it aside. An explosion immediately occurred. Sorry, Naruto, I didn't follow. Kakashi scratched his head. Nothing, I didn't follow that date, Bale. The girl took a breath. And then she angrily turned to the children. The landfill is not a playground. There may be such traps left on it that can easily kill you. She spoke sternly. If they kill you, does that mean we won't be able to play anymore? Asked Suda. The eyes were already shining suspiciously. Exactly. At all. Never date Bale. Do you understand me? The children nodded with their heads down, their shoulders slumped. Naruto sighed heavily. Okay. Who wants a snack? The sadness disappeared as if by hand. Naruto laid out the blanket, sat the children down, and made sure everyone thoroughly dried their hands. I settled in myself and took out the pre-prepared food from the seal. The rest of the shinobi immediately arrived. Assorted boxes of lunches, bags of sandwiches, bottles of juice and much, much more began to appear on the blanket. And the adults themselves looked predatorily at Naruto's homemade lunch and even began to barter it with the orphanage's pupils. A similar story repeated itself every time. They seemed to be adults, but sometimes they behaved like little children. Naruto treated them with a light heart. She loved the admiration and pleasure that appeared on their faces from her cooking. She herself did not consider her to be anything outstanding, but since others liked her. The unfamiliar Yenbiyu also carefully sat down on the edge and took off his mask. Naruto gasped to herself and quickly turned to Suda, pretending to wipe his smeared cheeks. You can't let the guy see the blush on her cheeks. Young, but older than herself. And very, very beautiful. Deep black eyes so penetrating that their gaze makes you feel uneasy. It's as if their owner sees right through you. Strings of eyelashes, jet black, like eyeliner. And the lips, graceful, thin, the lower one slightly fuller than the upper one. He seemed the embodiment of aristocracy. And he even ate carefully, putting small pieces into his mouth. Naruto looked in fascination at the graceful movements of the hands with long fingers and narrow, strong wrists. Mm, mm Naruto, marry me! Yado san rolled his eyes, tasting the salad the girl prepared. Uzumaki laughed embarrassedly, and did not notice how the eyes of the stranger who shot her a glance sparkled. No, Naruto is ours! Toshi declared, clenching his fists angrily and puffing out his cheeks. That's right, Naruto is ours! Nodded little Soda, who had previously successfully pretended to be asleep. Naruto spread her arms. Sorry, Yado-san, I can't date Bayo. I have so many suitors around. She pointed to her charges. The adult shinobi laughed cheerfully, and Suda buried his nose in Naruto's dress. There would probably be traces left, but the girl wasn't worried. No problem, you can wash it. But don't talk to us about it. How about a workout? Shirani Genma chewed Senban. Why don't you fight Kakashi? Naruto looked around at her friends in confusion, but found no support. Even the children's eyes sparkled with delight, folding their hands in a prayer gesture on their chests. Okay, date bail. She agreed, getting up. The shinobi and the children again went to the fallen tree, 
and Naruto stood opposite Kakashi in the center of the area. M.M., shall we begin? He narrowed his only visible eye. Why not, date Bale? Kakashi was her father's student, knew her mother, and sometimes looked out for Naruto. During one of her training sessions, the girl noticed a strange silhouette on a tree with a book with an orange cover. I chased him, caught him, met him, became friends. Kakashi began to help her with training, explaining what was not clear in the books. Still, shinobi need not only theory, but also practice. It's just a shame that Naruto had the element of wind, and Kakashi could only use it to sharpen a weapon. He didn't know any other techniques. In general, few people in the village could demonstrate the combat techniques of this element. But it's okay, we've sorted it out, date bail. Kakashi from somewhere brought old books on wind and fuinjutsu, left over from Uzumaki. And he ordered to remain silent about them. Naruto swallowed them, hardly chewing, unable to tear herself away from such a treasure. The man hit the ground with his hands, and a stone wall grew around the girl. Naruto took a deep breath and released it with a push, strengthening it with chakra. The blades of the wind cut off half of the earthen rampart. Uzumaki jumped onto the second one and created twenty shadow clones. This is unfair. Kakashi was cheerfully indignant. There are more of you. He was generally phlegmatic, almost indifferent to everything, but for some reason he changed with her. Naruto spent a lot of time trying to get him going properly. And I didn't regret it. You also have an advantage, Kakashi-san. The girl touched her left eye. I don't use it. Hataki immediately denied. Also tell me that you closed your eyes, date bail. They looked at each other and laughed maliciously. Also another joke from one of the first training sessions. When Kakashi stated that he could defeat Naruto with his eyes closed. Uzumaki convinced him that he should not underestimate the element of wind coupled with shadow cloning. And now she concentrated and enveloped each of her clones in a special air cover. The wind dulled the signal, coming from the original and copies, making them indistinguishable from each other. All the copies rushed at Kakashi with kunai, and the girl herself went behind his back. It was not in vain that the copier served in the ANBU he managed to deflect all the blows and throw Naruto far forward with a kick. Uzumaki rubbed her aching stomach. Hataki did not spare her. She looked up and a dozen kunai were already flying at her. She quickly took out, unrolled the scroll and poured chakra into it, placing it in the path of the weapon. The kunai flew into him, and the girl sealed them. Naruto! The copy man shook his head. What, date bail? Uzumaki shrugged. They will still be useful to me. Taijutsu came into play. Both Naruto and Kakashi acted almost identically and at the same speed, they both seemed to turn into two whirlwinds, accompanying physical blows with the use of elemental techniques. Water balls were frozen by cold gusts of wind, the created ice was broken by lightning while thousands of birds were singing. They spun in a wild dance, and no one wanted to give in. What to do if both were familiar with Might Guy? Finally, Kakashi jumped back, rubbing the kanai cut on his chin. Naruto, wincing, set his jaw, which was demolished by a powerful blow from the copy man thanks to the Kyubi. The pain immediately went away, and the rest of the wounds disappeared. Ma, I told you, don't talk to Guy. He'll teach you bad things. Ataki chuckled. So you will teach me only good things? The girl raised her eyebrow questioningly and she took out a book with an orange cover, stolen during the battle, and opened it to the folded page. Should I read it, date bail? Kakashi blushed, the rest of the shinobi, roared with laughter. There was a friendly, boisterous laugh. She defeated you, Kakashi, accept it, Yado-san said in a deep voice. Blackmail and extortion, muttered the copy man, and quietly he quickly returned the stolen treasure. This time, the children obediently waited for Naruto to approach them and did not run out, because Uzumaki also used explosion seals in her battle. Naruto Wanichan, what kind of book is this? Koji asked with interest. Are these some important techniques? Yes, Naruto answered immediately. But to read it you need to, well, definitely become a jonin. Only they can study such terrible techniques. The pricked ears of the shinobi around snorted with laughter, 
Even the stranger chuckled and slightly raised the corners of his lips in an almost imperceptible smile. And Kakashi blushed even more, catching the children's shining glances. Naruto giggled maliciously. She would know how to read this nasty thing in front of her. They returned to the shelter late in the evening. Kakashi volunteered to help her drag the sleeping children. Mina was sitting on his back, her legs and arms tightly wrapped around him. He was dragging Koji. Toshi, as the eldest, yawned incessantly, still walked on his own. Naruto carried little Sota in her arms. I wanted to ask you. Why didn't you go to the academy? Don't you want to become a shinobi? Kakashi glanced sideways at the girl. Naruto shrugged indifferently. When I arrived, they told me that all the exams had already been passed. I'm late and may try to get into the academy next year. I guess I'll do that. Hmm, I see. He was silent the rest of the way, thinking intensely about something. He helped carry the children to the common room and urgently ran away somewhere. Naruto undressed her charges and put them in bed. Today they had an extremely busy day. Waking up, Soda and Toshi demanded to read them a story for the night, and the girl agreed. Already on the second sentence they were sleeping without their hind legs. You tired them. Haruko-san smiled, quietly approaching from behind. They got a lot of impressions today, date bail. Naruto whispered. Her bed, as the eldest, stood separately in a corner. Uzumaki got up earlier than everyone else, almost at dawn, helped with the housework and did not want to wake up the others. After making sure that all the children were fast asleep, and Haruko-san retired to her office to check documents and once again recalculate the estimate, Naruto took out a tight, closed dark blue dress from the press. I gathered my hair into a tight bun so it wouldn't get in the way. A short, round-cheeked brunette with expressionless features and dull, thin hair looked at her. In order not to attract attention to herself, Naruto came up with her own method of disguise she used two layers of illusions that penetrated each other. As the first layer dissipated, it activated the second. Local shinobi are accustomed to believing that the enemy uses only one simple henge, which the girl took advantage of. Ordinary kais can help you here. Of course, this required concentration, more effort than a simple illusion. But it was not in vain that Naruto spent two whole months just to practice chakra control at the very beginning. After all, the larger the reserve, the more difficult it is to use it for subtle manipulations and techniques. And hers is double. She didn't tell anyone about this success. As they say the mirror has two faces? On the outskirts of Kanoha, in a small house, lived an inconspicuous old man. Wrinkled, with skin like a baked apple. Calm, good-natured, but a little unsociable. The children died during the Third War, and the grandchildren no longer remembered the existence of their grandfather. He lived on benefits, cultivated a small garden and had three cats. But few people remembered that the old man was a master of poisons and antidotes. It was he who once taught the famous Senju Tsunade. Naruto met him by chance when she was looking for a missing shelter cat. They started talking, and she asked to become his student. The girl never deluded herself. Yes, she was allowed to study techniques. Yes, Jiado-san let it slip that several shinobi were given an unofficial order to help and assist her in everything. But no one will let her go too far. She is closely watched and watched. And all her achievements view in jutsu. Elements are known and taken into account by the top of the village. And sometimes it's useful to have an ace up your sleeve. Therefore, no one knew that the girl was studying anatomy and physiology some medical techniques, and making poisons, like an apprentice of a master. Together with Fuinjutsu, this gave her huge advantages. No matter what happened, Naruto wanted to be able to stand up for herself and the people she loved. Know how to fight back. And not only with simple combat techniques. You're late. The old man turned around and walked deeper into the house. There was no condemnation in the voice, he was just stating a fact. I beg your pardon. Naruto closed the windows she had climbed through and followed the usual route to the basement, where the master's laboratory was hidden. No longer working in his specialty, he turned his profession into a sweet and harmless hobby. The girl learned a long time ago. He doesn't need ridiculous excuses. 
She could be as late as she wanted, she could stay up all night, but the mandatory tasks he gave had to be completed before dawn. Everything else didn't bother him. The master praised little, and encouraged even less often. Naruto experienced every poison on herself. To test the antidote, and to understand the value of life. If you know what kind of suffering the victim experiences from your invention, you will be careful not to use it just like that, unnecessarily. For fun. This was a sore subject for the master. One of the students boasted of his knowledge, with its help he not only completed tasks, but also eliminated his rivals, competitors and simply those he did not like. He didn't wake up one morning. Today your task is to prepare a delayed poison. The old man sat down on a high chair, took out a thin, skillfully carved pipe and lit a cigarette. Through the thin gray smoke, his eyes twinkled mysteriously, like a faded cat's eye stone. Clusters of delicate lilac foxgloves bloomed on the windowsill. Naruto ruthlessly tore them off and removed the flowers she didn't need them. The main ingredient is leaves and their juice. In a small dose, this plant is healing, but the substances in its composition tend to accumulate in the body and at the wrong time enter into an acute reaction. If you enhance this property with chakra and some other substances, the outcome can be fatal. For example, now she has added the poison of giant toads, which caused an increase in blood pressure and mild paralysis of the heart muscles. Combined with digitalis, it caused a heart attack. Moreover, not immediately, but after some period, which made it possible for the poisoner to avoid punishment. I worked as a doctor in Suna for six years, wrote out prescriptions, made medicine myself. The old man puffed on his pipe, his lips curling into a smile. I've been trying their amazing desert sweets for six whole years. Damn Chio deprived me of this opportunity. Despite the words, admiration for the famous woman was heard in his voice. Prepare some of it in the form of small crystals, he said sharply. The girl nodded, wiping away the sweat from the steam rising from the alcohol lamp. She had long suspected that the old man was not so simple and still continued to accept orders, and not only from the Hidden Leaf Village. But I didn't get involved in it. The master was generous enough when he agreed to teach her, patiently explaining to the incompetent girl how to do a simple paralysis. She could not let him down, especially since his actions did not cause any harm to Leaf. All of his customers swore an oath that they would not use poison against Kanoha. The old man only hinted at it once, but Naruto remembered it. Using a complex, painstaking technique, it was possible to make a special extract from cherries. It took a long time for the extract to turn into crystals, but thanks to the minimal infusion of chakra, the process accelerated. Small pinkish stars were used to decorate ceremonial and festive dishes. They had a wonderful smell and brought instant death. Naruto didn't even mention transdermal poisons that penetrate the skin. She also learned to prepare them to perfection. In the east, the sky was filled with a pink glow when the girl moved away from the table. A transparent substance froze in the flask a liquid version of the poison. A handful of cherry-scented crystals glittered on the stand. And steam swirled in a closed test tube. The girl sealed the order and began making eggery candles made from a variety of wormwood. They were used during acupressure, when they were placed on active points of the human body. They provided uniform heat and cured colds. The traditional end of each lesson with the master. The old man silently laid out a stack of bills on the table. Naruto also silently took them and hid them in the seal. Another reason to remain silent about the master's. Part-time job. Someone could talk about their own pride, about dignity, about loyalty to the village. Naruto sincerely loved Leaf and knew that the master would not do anything bad to him. And what about pride? Pride is not appropriate when you and your family only have rice with a handful of seaweed for lunch. Pride is inappropriate when you cannot buy yourself thread to mend a leaky dress that you have long outgrown. Merchants always charged the girl such prices because she was a demon that Naruto had been shopping under the hench for a long time. She liked to delight the little ones with unexpected surprises. Even though she couldn't buy something expensive so as not to arouse suspicion, an ordinary piece of candy or lollipop caused such a stir that it warmed her heart pleasantly. 
Not far from the shelter there was a small pond. Naruto changed her clothes as usual into her favorite dark blue dress, tousled her hair and plunged her feet into the cool water. It's early spring, and the sun is already hot, just like in summer. The girl concentrated and made a hurricane seal. In the middle of the water surface of the pond, transparent air currents began to spiral into spirals. A little more effort in controlling the equipment, and now the water is flowing in spirals, like a slide. It turned out to be a real miniature tsunami. Beautiful. Naruto flinched when a quiet voice came from behind her. I turned around and saw a stranger from the training ground. His voice was breaking, which meant he was no more than fifteen years old the transitional period, the formation of hormones and the like. The girl smiled, nodded and turned her gaze back to her creation. Such concentration took a lot of strength and energy, but sometimes it was exactly what was needed to test your chakra control. The guy sat down next to her and put his hand on the girl's hand. Compared to his coolness, Naruto's skin literally burned like fire. Such a nice contrast. The seal of concentration, and the girl felt that performing the technique had become much easier now she was not the only one controlling it. The stranger turned out to have the element of water, and not just fire, as he demonstrated at the training ground, launching fireballs one after another, hiding shurikens and blades in them. So they sat while the sunrise blossomed like a bright peony in the east. Itachi. Naruto. She had never felt so light and calm in her heart. The whole gang of children was already waiting for her at the orphanage. Their faces were worried. Naruto. Toshi leaned over and whispered. The Hokage's envoy asked you there. He is now staying with Haruko-san. The girl nodded, put down the basin with the laundry that she was going to hang, dried her hands and went to the teacher's office. Naruto, it's good that you came. The woman smiled warmly and somehow joyfully. Here they came to you. A man in a green vest and blue bandana stood up to meet her. He looked extremely tortured. Straight hair framed a narrow face with sunken cheeks and dull icicles. Deep shadows lay under tired eyes. He cleared his throat, and the girl heard wheezing in her lungs. My name is Gekko Hate. He introduced himself. Naruto Uzumaki Date Bale. The parasitic word always flew out as soon as Naruto got excited. She couldn't help herself. The third Hokage found out that you failed to get into the academy entrance exams. He coughed again. But he also knows your real level of training. Therefore, it was decided that you will undergo training on your own. Teachers, the library and the academy's training fields are at your service. You will take midterm exams separately from everyone else, but within the same time frame. Also, as expected, you will be provided with separate housing, so you can move out of the shelter. Isn't this great, Naruto? Haruko-san beamed. She always thought that Naruto underestimated his talent, did not attach too much importance to it. And I wanted the girl to be appreciated. Her heart ached for Uzumaki, as it did for all her students. She came up and warmly hugged her confused ward. Naruto bit her lip. The background to what was happening was clearly visible. The teacher who told her about the erroneous exam dates was cheating because, most likely, he hated her like many other residents of the village. It's a demon. The third could not go into open confrontation, announced that he knew about the deception and forcefully placed Naruto in the classroom, as this would turn the girl's life into hell. So he found a way to satisfy both sides. Officially, the demon does not study at the academy, but he will still receive a certificate upon completion. And she is no stranger to independent learning. And still, it's a little offensive. Naruto sighed and smiled at the Hokage Zanva. She liked Gekko. At least with its tired doom. Thank you for the good news, Gekko-san. And convey my gratitude to the Hokage. Would you like to have tea with us? The man hesitated a little, but the tears of happiness in the eyes of the elderly woman and Naruto's sincere smile won. The girl made him tea with chamomile and lemon balm. It was supposed to soften the cough in his chest. She was given an apartment in an old, slightly shabby building almost on the outskirts of Konoha. But Naruto was happy about this to her own home, inviolable territory. Only for her alone. 
Naruto still couldn't believe that she wouldn't have to stand in line for the bathroom to wash herself, fight for a pillow, or look for her own blanket, which always ended up with one of the little ones. And yet, in the apartment you could feel the care of a stranger. More precisely, several people. The windows were clean, and light floral curtains hung on them. The walls still smelled of fresh paint, and the ceiling still smelled of whitewash. A round, furry cactus perched on the windowsill. It looked suspiciously like the one Enko gave to Hitaki for her next birthday. In the corner of the room, a handsome ficus tree proudly showed its shiny leaves. It seems Yadosan's parents were breeding them. The bed was made with a mattress and new, still crisp, linens. The refrigerator bore signs of a collision with the force of youth. It is unlikely that the shinobi knew about the Hokage's decision in advance, which means that only Might Guy could have time to buy equipment at one end of the village and rush with it to the other in a few hours. I wonder what they did to him that he didn't break anything completely? Naruto respected and appreciated Gaisan, but at the same time realized that his youth power was not a test for the weak of nerves. Although she liked to take part in some competitions, especially forcing Hataki Kakashi to participate on an almost voluntary basis. In the kitchen on the table there was a small plate with three skewers of dango. Naruto frowned. Of all her acquaintances, only Anko could share sweetness with her, but the Kunoichi's handwriting could be discerned in the purchase of bed linen. The curtains are clearly the work of Kurinai-san. Then who? Nearby lay a rather large crow feather. For some reason, Naruto stopped doubting the identity of the donor. Only one person, according to a strange logic, was associated with this bird. The girl popped the first ball of dango into her mouth and looked out the window, leaning on the sill. The day was sunny and the dangos were fresh and delicious. Soon she will go to the academy for training plans and materials. She also has an apartment and an unknown known donor. Life is definitely wonderful. What Naruto didn't expect to find in the school library was espionage and sabotage techniques. Apparently, the list of books had not been checked or cleaned for a long time, because such subjects were not taught now. In general, the school curriculum has been significantly changed and simplified. For example, the previously obligatory course in basic medical techniques was no longer required. It's sad, but I wanted to believe that this is happening because Kanoha's relations with other villages are improving, and the younger generation will have time to catch up with everything in the future. However, this did not stop Naruto from secretly breaking the door and looking into the warehouse for teacher's materials, from where she took a copy of Fundamentals of Tactics and Strategy, and also the accidentally discovered First Stages of Economics. How such a book could end up in the academy is unclear but it would be interesting to read. It could be useful in the future, when it comes time to receive money for missions. She will always have time to return the books, because, judging by the layer of dust, only one Yumino Irika entered the warehouse, whose workaholism and zeal aroused involuntary admiration. But Irika sensei himself quietly hated Naruto, so the girl tried to avoid him. Putting the rest of the books into the scroll and reverently clutching the techniques, to her chest, Naruto headed out. Her training consisted of coming to the academy when the rest of the classes had classes, so as to be as little as possible to be seen, pick up assignments, hand in completed ones and, sometimes, write intermediate tests. And we could go home. Out of her peripheral vision, Naruto noticed something dark on the windowsill. Near a small window in an inconspicuous nook, hidden behind a spreading lemon in a tub, sat a small boy in white shorts and a blue shirt, the same age as Naruto. His black hair puffed up funny at the back of his head, like the spines of a hedgehog. The girl approached him. What are you doing here? The boy flinched, but when he saw Naruto, his black eyes flashed angrily. I'm hiding, he muttered, jumping onto the floor. He put his hands in his pockets and tried to look independent. He looked so touching that Naruto couldn't help but smile broadly. Are you hiding, date bale? She grabbed the boy's hand. Well, then let's go. Where? The interlocutor was taken aback, but did not resist when Naruto dragged him to the roof. We'll hide together. By the way, my name is Naruto. Sasuke. 
Sasuke, do you still have classes? No, now is the last lesson. But I can't leave earlier my brother must come for me. Well, fine. I'm in no hurry either. Let's sit on the roof. I have a bento with me. The girl carefully closed the door to the roof and sealed it with a weak barrier, after which she turned to her new acquaintance, who was watching her actions with interest. She sat down in the corner, took out two portions of lunch from the seal and patted it next to her. Sasuke tried to proudly refuse, but his stomach growled deafeningly. The guy blushed to the roots of his hair and pouted at Naruto's quiet laughter. Let's go. She clapped again and held out her chopsticks. The boy nodded reluctantly, still red from embarrassment, sat down next to him and took the lid off the box. Bon appetit. He clapped his hands and separated the chopsticks. And he attacked the food as if he had not been fed for a week. There was even a crackling sound behind my ears. But at the same time he managed to remain neat and well-mannered. Not a crumb passed through my mouth, not a grain of rice remained on my cheeks. Naruto watched him with interest, resting her cheek on her palm. She examined the shiny hair, graceful facial features, large black eyes. He reminded her of someone. So who are you hiding from, Sasuke? She asked when the boy satisfied his first hunger and fell to a glass of green tea, which the girl also took out from the scrolls. She didn't want to eat herself, but she always carried lunch with her in case she met friends or children from the orphanage. From the girls, Sasuke muttered. I don't understand them. He exclaimed indignantly, clenching his fists. They run after me all the time, pestering me. Sasuke-kun, Sasuke-kun. He mimicked someone in a squeaky tone, making a face. I can't study like that. If I do something, it's cool. If I don't, it's even cooler. I'm silent because I know everything. I'm not silent, he's actually a genius. I can't even ask Iruka sensei anything. Naruto laughed cheerfully. Despite the fact that they were the same age, Sasuke reminded her of the kids from the orphanage, a kind of little brother suffering from his own popularity. That's because you're very cute, Sasuke Daybale, she explained. I'm not cute, he snorted indignantly. I'm a man, I can't be nice. Well, for now you're just a boy, Uzumaki remarked reasonably. And you're cute. I can imagine what will happen when you grow up. She rolled her eyes almost dreamily. Girls will stack themselves at your feet. It seemed that this prospect frightened Sasuke. I do not want it. In the eyes almost fear. I do not need it. I want to become a strong shinobi like my brother. And even surpass Itachi. Idachi. Naruto said understandingly, guessing who Sasuke reminded her of. Indeed, there was something in common in their features. Although Itachi is definitely prettier for her tastes. Yes. Sasuke lowered his head, hiding himself behind his hair. He is the genius of our clan the best and strongest shinobi. Everyone praises him. I want to be like him. Stupid idea, date bail. What? Sasuke turned his whole body towards her, leaning forward as if he was about to hit. Although, he would have the right to do so, because the girl just called his dreams stupid. Sasuke is Sasuke, and Itachi is Itachi. It couldn't be any other way. Naruto looked at the sky at the passing clouds while she explained her point of view. As long as you follow your brother, until you choose your own path, you will forever remain his shadow. She turned her gaze to her interlocutor. Eye to eye straight and open. They will always say about you. Sasuke, Itachi's younger brother. Or they might say, This is Sasuke. He has a brother, Itachi. The difference is almost imperceptible but so significant. You will never become like Itachi, you will never reach his level, if only because you are not him. But you can always become his worthy relative, brother. Let it be in your own way, but take the step next to him. On the same level as him. Not a genius of the clan, but a master in something of his own, an unsurpassed specialist. Sasuke thought for a moment, fell silent, bowing his head again. Naruto was putting away empty boxes and teacups in the seal. Unnoticed, she finished her portion herself, carried away by observing Sasuke's behavior. Still, he's so cute. 
like sleepy soda, you just want to squeeze his cheeks. The girl smiled at her thoughts while she took out sweets for dessert. She baked the cookies herself. Help yourself. She pushed a portion towards her interlocutor. He nodded, thanking him, took the cookie and began to roll it between his fingers. What do you think? Sasuke bit his lip. Will I be able to do this? Yes. Naruto shrugged. You just need to decide what you want to do. And you? The new comrade raised his eyes. What do you do? To be honest, I love Fuinjutsu. Admitted Uzumaki. I'm weak in Genjutsu. I can resist, but not everyone. Taijutsu and Ninjutsu are wonderful. I like training. I like developing new techniques. When strength flows through the body, when the muscles ache from fatigue, and in your soul you understand that you did everything right, you gave your best. But Fuin, this is completely different. With ink, paper, and a little chakra you can create real miracles. Take with you an entire arsenal, seal the wind or fire, subjugate the elements and technology. You can force a person to keep secrets, enslave his will completely. Or you can save his life by stopping the bleeding in time. It's amazing. When I draw seals, it's as if I see how my power flows along the sheet along with the ink. Oh, sorry, I'm completely babbling. Naruto scratched the back of her head in embarrassment. It had been a long time since she had opened up to anyone like that, and there were no such people. The children in the orphanage are too young, they wouldn't understand. And Naruto didn't trust the others that much, not completely. Even friends can have secrets from each other. But Sasuke. Sasuke evoked an intuitive desire to trust, to open up. Really like a little brother. Nothing, I understand. Sasuke was embarrassed. I feel the same way when I work with a sword. I like the way the sun reflects on the blade. I like to feel it as an extension of my hand. But my father objects to my sword training. He thinks that I don't have enough inclination for this. He wants me to become a genjutsu master and quickly awaken the dojutsu. Naruto shook her head. She didn't know Itachi's surname was there not enough Itachi in the village? In addition, he is an ANBU, which means he could give a false name so as not to expose himself to danger. But now we were talking about dojutsu, from which it followed that Sasuke was either an Uchiha or a Hyuga. The Byakugan can be identified from afar. Besides, there was only one Itachi Uchiha in the leaf the son of the head of the Uchiha clan. At the same time, Naruto took into account the family resemblance. She heard what was said about Fugaku-san. He held the clan with an iron fist and did not allow the slightest contradiction to his orders. And with children, apparently, he behaved exactly the same. Naruto thought about it. It seems like she has free time, and she doesn't want to leave Sasuke alone. He needs friends. A sly expression appeared on her face. Listen, Sasuke, how about we study in secret from your father? You'll say that you made friends with a classmate at the academy, and now you're training with him to become stronger, to become worthy of the Uchiha surname, and come up with something yourself. She twirled her brush in the air. Will you teach me? Sasuke's face reflected a desperate mixture of extreme surprise, disbelief, and hope. Yes. Naruto nodded with a smile. But I'll warn you right away. I'm not familiar with samurai techniques and katanas. Of the swords, I only own a ninja and I can only teach how to use it. If you agree, come to the training ground tomorrow after classes. Let's practice date bail. Sasuke's gaze lit up and then went out. The boy sank, biting his lip. Father, he... Naruto partly understood his hesitation. Most likely, his father's authority was always unquestionable for Sasuke. The boy tried his best to gain his approval. For some reason, it was precisely this model of behavior that came to mind when thinking about Fugaku Achiha. Sasuke. Naruto became serious and raised the boy's face, looking straight into his eyes. What I say may be unethical, but think about it anyway. We live in the hidden shinobi village, where you are the heir of a powerful clan. What father would refuse to teach his son how to use another weapon? especially if he is interested in it and can achieve success. I think it's all about your interest. Father didn't want you to find a hobby and forget about your responsibilities to the clan. I forgot who you are by blood. 
Sasuke narrowed his eyes. You know too much about my father. Naruto shrugged. Rumors may be the most unreliable, but the most reliable source of information if you know how to discard unnecessary things. She saw that Sasuke had already made his decision. It was probably rude to take advantage of the boy's stubbornness and desire to prove that he was the best in order for him to go against his father's will. But in this particular case, Naruto wanted Sasuke, albeit through trial and error, to find only his own path. Found something he likes to do. For some reason, next to him, the desire to patronize and take care of him, like a little brother, awoke. If they see us, the Uchiha began. Whoever sees it won't tell. Naruto winked, casting a sidelong glance at the crown of the tree growing next to the academy. The crown rustled its leaves in agreement. Naruto stood up, put the scrolls in the pocket of her dress, and dusted it off. I'll look forward to our joint training, Sasuke. The boy nodded enthusiastically, and Naruto was once again amazed at how cute he was. Naruto slowly walked through the streets of the village, pondering the information she had received today. Shinobi are not talkative by nature, and even more so, no one would share information with a small child who has not yet entered the academy, no matter how smart and trained she is. In addition, there were gag orders and seals that prevented chatter. Therefore, Uzumaki had to get out on her own. She could well afford to send a dozen clones around the village under various henges. And you could see a ginger cat sitting for hours in a gunsmith's shop or a pigeon on a tree branch next to the archive. Even though such data were fragmentary, exaggerated and embellished, they still had a grain of truth. And Naruto, after much trial and error, learned to isolate it. Before that, she had never been interested in the appearance of the most brilliant shinobi of Leaf. She could not even think that the heir of the Uchiha clan would dare to meet her. In general, the Uchiha pointedly ignored her, did not notice her, and this gave rise to certain thoughts. Especially in light of the friendship between Naruto's mother and Figaku's wife, Mikoto, which Kurama told the girl about. Either they hate her like everyone else, or, more likely, they have long-range plans. I would like to find out which ones. But she wasn't going to use Sasuke for this, because they don't use friends, date Bayo. Her path led to a small gun shop on one of the central streets. The only one that didn't belong to an Uchiha. As in any other villages, in Kanoha missions were the main source of income only for high-ranking ninjas. They were given appropriate tasks, after which they were most often sent to the hospital for treatment. The rest had to earn extra money and generally get out. For example, some young Chunin girls came to the orphanage to help with the children, when there were still a lot of them there. The clans also had their own business. Akimichi specialized in medicines, Yamanaka flowers and supply of raw materials to the hospital. And the Uchiha, in addition to the police, were engaged in private security and the manufacture of weapons. The village charged relatively low prices for missions and therefore took a large percentage of the payment. If a person wanted high-quality security without an intermediary in the person of the Hokage, he could easily contact the Uchiha directly. It was also possible to pay them for training existing fighters, training them, testing their skills, etc. Madara, with the full consent of the first Hokage, reserved this right for himself even at the founding of the Leaf. Their company manufactured weapons in full, from selecting steel to polishing and varnishing scabbards. Everything was made, from ordinary kunai of not the highest quality which were used in genin lessons, to special, peace orders. Although the prices were a little higher, they still remained moderate. And the quality matched the price. In this area, the clan had only one competitor left the shop Naruto was going to. But the old owner did this more out of love for his craft than out of thirst for profit. Because his prices were even lower than those of the Uchihas. Naruto constantly bought training Saban, Kanai, and Shuriken there, made of inferior metal that she didn't mind losing or breaking. But the shinobi took the combat kit, as well as the short sword, from the Uchiha store. Money is not important when it comes to staying alive on a mission. Good afternoon. Naruto entered the blessed coolness of the store. The old man at the counter immediately turned to the visitor. Naruto, you haven't looked in for a while. 
I already thought that you turned your nose up and forgot about the old man. He reprimanded her affectionately, threatening her with his finger. The girl laughed. How can I, Toshi-san, date Bao? I was settling and they gave me my own apartment, and I couldn't resist bragging. Oh, congratulations. Now all that remains is to find the groom. It's not right when such a beauty is without a betrothed. Naruto blushed embarrassedly. Toshi-san is the only one who called her beautiful. Did you run in on business or just to check on you? Oh, exactly. The girl slapped herself on the forehead. I need a ninja for the first training battles. Choose. The old man immediately laid out several copies on the counter and waved his hand towards the glass display case, in which more swords were located on special stands. Naruto thought, carefully examining the wealth of weapons. All the swords were very good, which made it especially difficult to choose. The door swung open, slammed into the wall, and a girl a little older than Naruto in a pink blouse and with funny, bumps, of black hair flew into the store. Grandfather! She screamed, taking out a scroll. Ten ten. The old man hissed at her. Can't you see I have customers? His eyes laughed. Naruto returned the smile. It's okay, Toshi-san, I've already made my choice. I handed him a short sword in a simple, artless sheath. Tenten came closer, took a closer look, then thoughtfully assessed Naruto's external parameters. Uzumaki literally saw calculation numbers and logical, harmonious conclusions clicking in her head. Apparently, in everything related to weapons and their owners, the granddaughter took after her grandfather. If I were you, I would choose another, she said doubtfully. Special ninja models have been created specifically for the female hand. This is not for me. She shook her head. This is a gift for a friend. He will learn to handle it and choose his own weapon. And I already have a sword. Naruto pulled out her short shinobi sword from the seal on her wrist. Wow. The girl jumped closer and raised pleading eyes to Uzumaki. Can I hold it? She nodded and tent him carefully, 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 as if it could fall apart, took the sword in her hands. Fingers reverently ran over the simple black sheath, with a red tint, tied with rope, and almost ecstatic pleasure was written on his face. The blade silently and slowly slid out, the light flashed like a silver wave on the sharply sharpened blade. Uchihos rarely let anyone into the store just to look. The grandfather quietly shared, observing his granddaughter's unusual reaction. Yes, and your sword is special, right? Naruto smiled at the corners of her lips. Even she was not going to reveal all the secrets. The old man nodded understandingly. Uzumaki knew that he would remain silent about his guesses. The sword was called Wind Moan. Like all her weapons, Naruto bought it from the Uchiha store. The clan not only created weapons, but also sold what they found on missions if it was not in demand by their own warriors. The girl's attention was immediately drawn to a simple, slightly dull blade in the farthest and dustiest corner of the store. The seller said that he was found in the ruins of the whirlpool during one of the missions. But no one could use it. The blade had frankly poor balance and was poorly sharpened and no one knew the purpose of most of the seals on the handle. They just put it on a shelf and forgot it, in the hope that someone would buy it one day. The thrifty Uchihos were not going to throw away even bad goods, and the price for it was set to a minimum. Naruto took advantage of this. Not so much for the sake of training, but for the sake of unknown seals on the hilt, the blade itself, and the sheath. After the destruction of the hidden whirlpool village, it became almost impossible to get information about Fuinjutsu. Only a few masters of this art preserved some books, but even they could not be compared with the knowledge of true Uzumaki. If it weren't for Kakashi, Naruto wouldn't even know which way to approach her ancestral talent. The key to the blade was her own blood. The Uzumaki knew what they were doing. Naruto accidentally injured herself while examining the sword. Blood slid down the blade, down the hilt, and dripped onto the sheath. Karama immediately healed the cut. A previously unnoticed seal flashed, and Naruto had in his hands a small piece of paper with a short list of all the fuins available on the weapon, its short characteristics and name. The Uzumaki wrote such explanations for all swords, 
showing the customer how to get the leaf. However, I still had to tinker with the seals and get used to them. What the Uchiha called improper balance and poor sharpening was actually a kind of disguise that even the Sharingan could not penetrate. The Uzumaki took into account that the weapon could fall into the wrong hands. It was not for nothing that they were considered recognized Fuinjutsu masters. The sword itself was excellent. Thank you. Tenten returned the blade to its owner. This weapon, Tenten, the girl's tone warned. The new friend grinned. Ordinary weapons from the Uchiha shop, she declared loudly. My grandfather and I are much better. Thank you. By the way, my name is Naruto. Nice to meet you. Me too. He's an Uchiha. Yes. Naruto nodded, continuing to pour water from palm to palm. He's Sasuke Uchiha. Yes. Descendant of Madara. It's possible. Kurama groaned and covered his eyes in defeat with his paw. Sometimes it became completely impossible to argue with the Uzumaki. Naruto often descended into her inner world. She liked the calm atmosphere of the place. The bare walls with numerous patterns did not seem cold, and the water caressed and accepted into its embrace. Uzumaki never ceased to be amazed at how the father was able to create such a perfect reservoir of chakra in the body of a newborn child which was the water that flooded the floor. After all, Fuin always has an effect on the body of a shinobi, so complex, serious seals are not recommended to be applied before the end of puberty. The cubic cage was created by the parents and their shared knowledge and efforts. And every time she found herself here, Naruto felt their care and concern. It was as if warm arms were hugging her. When she was very little, if she had her way, she would have spent her whole life here. She couldn't get enough of the warmth of the catacombs. And you're still going to teach him? Kurama asked, breaking out of his thoughts. The dispute continued for quite a long time. Kyubi hated Madara Uchiha with all his heart and believed that nothing good should be expected from his descendants. Which is what he tried to convince his carrier of. But Naruto was adamant. Yes. Why? I liked him. The girl shrugged. She had no other explanation. I just liked it, Kurama. When I look at him, it seems to me that my little brother is standing in front of me. A heavy sigh escaped from Fox's chest. Naruto beamed. It was a sign of surrender. So she stood up and walked over to the bars of a huge cage with a paper seal on the main doors. Everything here was designed so that the demon could not get out and even influence its host, but could share energy. True, over the years, Kurama has significantly weakened the seal. And Naruto helped him too. Yet this was her subconscious, her inner world. And only she set the rules here. She didn't want the friend that Fox had become to be a simple prisoner in the dark, and she to be an overseer on the other side of the cage. And although Naruto could not yet influence the seal created with the help of Shinigami, she still managed to do something. The girl touched the cage and concentrated. The chakra water surged under her feet like a small typhoon, responding to the silent order. And the space between the bars increased. Naruto calmly stepped deeper into the cage and sat down on one of the fluffy tails. Kurama shrunk a little in size so that he could rest his muzzle on her lap. The fox's eyes shone with scarlet fatigue and concern. Be careful, cub, he grumbled as Naruto stroked his nose and ears. The Uchihas are nothing but trouble. They will only bring you suffering. But it will be my choice, date Bale. The girl grinned. I won't give up on my friends. I'm sure one day you will accept them too. The demon remained silent. Sasuke was already waiting for her on the platform when the girl approached there. Calm, focused, but inside boiling with excitement. But he made a decision Uzumaki understood this immediately, and was not going to back down from it. Such. Uchiha. Naruto waved at him as she sat down under a tree and patted the ground next to her. This time the boy joined without hesitation. She took out the sword she had bought and handed it to him. Here you go, this is your weapon for the first time. What do you know about ninjas? That's the name of the short shinobi sword, Sasuke reported, stroking the sheath with delight. Unlike samurai, they can deliver not only slashing, but also piercing blows. 
In order not to attract attention, they are not decorated. They try to make them as inconspicuous as possible. The handle is braided with cord, and the scabbard is covered with leather and varnished so that it does not get wet. They are also very strong and can be used as a perch while observing the enemy. Sasuke thought. It became obvious that he really, really loved swords and was looking for any information about them. The guard is made square, and it can easily cut a throat in close combat if you add a little wind chakra. And the sheath is usually made several centimeters longer than the blade. Naruto demonstrated the difference. You can put secret documents, blinding powder and even poison here. The same hiding place is found in the hilt of the sword. The heavy tip of the sheath can stun or gouge out an eye. But the main difference. The girl ran her fingertip along the blade. There is no engraving on the blade and no groove for blood drainage, like on samurai ones. Why? The Uchiha thought, frowning funny. Then his face lit up, and he slammed the fist of one hand into the open palm of the other. Because when struck, a sword with a drain makes a whistle. An engraving rusts faster. But this does not apply to Uzumaki seals. The craftsman did an excellent job of protecting steel from rust, even better than in modern times. Perhaps, when you learn, you will be able to buy yourself such a sword. Sasuke nodded. He was generally more, alive than those Uchiha that Naruto had seen. Even Itachi seemed like a perfect porcelain doll with no emotions. A very strong and beautiful doll, but still not a person. He was so used to controlling himself that even while relaxing with Naruto by the pond, he didn't move a single muscle of his face. Are you still sure you want to learn how to be a ninja? Then it will be difficult to relearn date bail. Sure. Okay. Naruto stood up and brushed off her dress. Let's start with the usual exercises for endurance, flexibility, etc. You need to warm up well before getting acquainted with the basic movements. She looked slyly at the frozen boy. Well, why are we standing? Let's run, date bail. Twenty circles, without using chakra. Ah, and if you can't handle it, I'll invite Gaisan. With his power of youth. The younger Achiha shuddered noticeably. Apparently, his acquaintance with the green beast of Kanoha did not escape him either. He immediately took a low start. Naruto chuckled and ran after him. She needs to train too. Sasuke had already run away, excited by the events of the past day, and Naruto sank under a tree and raised her eyes to the sky, where the first stars had already begun to appear. And she barely dodged the fireball and the shuriken hidden in it. I didn't know that you were so against my communication with your brother. She exclaimed cheerfully, jumping onto a tree branch. Itachi said nothing and attacked her again. Black crows circled around Naruto. They dropped their feathers and croaked deafeningly. The girl tried not to look into her opponent's eyes. This is why it was not recommended to fight Jinjutsu masters one-on-one. -on -one. Someone should always be on hand to help you get out of the illusion in time. Naruto didn't have anyone, but she wasn't going to give up. Just don't make eye contact, listen. Here. Uzumaki made several seals and disappeared into the rushing wind. Itachi is not the only one who can surprise. It didn't disappear, it just, the illusion was briefly interrupted by the appearance of a directed flow of chakra that permeated the air. This was enough for Uzumaki to escape to the other end of the training ground. From there, wind blades flew at the Uchiha, the sword threw back the kunai, and blocked the attack of another blade. She didn't know how long they fought like that. Tenacious, persistent. Equals. Itachi tried to lure her into illusions his main weapon, and Naruto very cleverly avoided them, each time using aerial techniques. Her advantage was that few people in the village owned wind, and consequently, almost no one studied it the way she did. Maybe Saratobi Asuma with his brass knuckles, but even then he mainly used the wind sharpening, while Naruto... Naruto wanted more. The kunai scattered throughout the clearing while running around began to glow as soon as the girl made the necessary seals. Threads stretched from them to each other, trapping both opponents. Only Uzumaki had an ink mark on her wrist just for such cases. A kind of key to all of her barrier techniques. The air became thicker, hotter, it resembled hot syrup. 
and he strangled his captives. Naruto activated the key and began to move towards one of the walls of the barrier. Will you leave me here? The Uchiha raised an eyebrow. Tell me why you attacked me. I'll tell you how to cancel the technique. Naruto made a counter-proposal. She knew how to bargain and loved it. A hungry childhood taught me not to give up my positions. The Uchiha tried to shrug, which was difficult to do in the sour air. Large drops of sweat rolled down his face. He was already breathing shallowly and quickly. I wanted to check, a few more sighs. But even now he did not give up, did not kneel, although his gaze had already become distracted. I care about my brother. And what did you decide, Date Bale? The girl asked with interest. Under, coming, thank you, Uzumaki smiled and turned to leave. Itachi coughed behind him. Technique. He whispered. How to cancel? No way. Shrugs. Automatic cancellation. As soon as you stop breathing, the barrier will fall. I didn't do something right. She scratched the back of her head. Itachi's eyes rolled back and he fainted. Naruto followed the beautiful movement of the wave of hair that covered her face with a black blanket. The barrier went out, allowing access to the supposed corpse. Only Uzumaki knew too well what A and B were capable of to now approach the Uchiha, who had been deceived in his best feelings. After all, she herself gave the hint. And Itachi took advantage of it. After all, she did not say that he should die only that he should stop breathing. And Itachi held the air in his lungs. So she threw a few peas with a sleeping compound at him. Only when the smoke cleared did I decide to approach the enemy. He probably really loved his brother, since he decided to attack. His own. Within the village. After all, she could well accuse him of attempted murder since either by age nor by official level she is suitable for him to train. But in reality, Naruto sank down onto the ground plowed by their techniques and brushed the thick locks of hair away from her pale face. So beautiful. So cute. Long eyelashes, chiseled cheekbones, gracefully curved lips. And even these two deep wrinkles near the nose do not spoil it at all. She ran her fingertips over them and touched her lips noting that she was smiling against her will. Sleeping Itachi, for some reason, next to him, my heart sank. I wanted to get closer, to get closer. Naruto had not felt such desires since childhood, when she dreamed of parental love and affection. But her feelings for Itachi had little in common with those feelings. I wanted something completely different. Her hand was intercepted by strong, but graceful, thin fingers. They squeezed until it hurt, almost to a crunch. The black eyes opened slightly, and there was no anger or condemnation in them. Almost approval. I'm glad I passed your test, Date Bale. Naruto beamed. And then she pouted. But why didn't you tell me that you were an Uchiha? Surprise crossed Itachi's face. You didn't know? He seems to have been amazed by this fact. I heard about the genius of the Uchiha clan but I was never interested in what he looks like. The girl shrugged. And how did you find out the terrible truth? The corners of his lips rose in a hint of a smile, and Naruto's heart made another somersault. Uzumaki blushed, cleared her throat, and tried to pull herself together. Sasuke mentioned dojitsu, which immediately reduces the number of suspects. The guy nodded understandingly. And I also took into account your family resemblance when he mentioned Itachi's older brother. That's it, the Uchiha drawled. Well done. Thank you. They both looked at the same time in the direction where a light cracking of bushes came from. Someone very curious, but careless, quickly moved away from the training ground. Naruto covered her mouth with her hand to keep from laughing. Your brother is very, dash, cute. The Uchiha finished after her with a sigh. They looked at each other, and Naruto laughed. Loudly, loudly, from the heart. Itachi only slightly curled his lips in a slight smile, but the Uzumaki saw it as a real laugh. I'll accompany you so that our patrols won't delay you. Itachi stood up and extended his hand to the girl. She accepted the help, feeling a cool palm squeezing her thin, hot fingers. Very, very. And the heart was beating so hard that the blood was pulsating in the ears. 
Itachi didn't look in her direction as they ran across the rooftops. He never allowed his hands to open. There was a plate of three dango sticks waiting on Naruto's table again. The girl ate sweet balls in a viscous sauce and looked at the quickly retreating silhouette in a white vest. It was a wonderful day. And by October, her usual life was shattered. She was urgently called to the Hokage, tearing her away from practicing the material from the textbook. Naruto knocked on the office door and entered. Inside, on small sofas, the third sat in the company of elders Hamura and Koharu and the head of Anbu Danzo. Untouched green tea was cooling on the table. Hokage-sama, elders, Danzo-san. She bowed to them respectfully. In private, she could call the third a nasty, harmful old man, but she had no right to undermine his authority in front of everyone. Although sometimes I wanted it that way. Naruto, take a seat. The Hokage pointed to an empty chair next to the sofas. The girl was wary, apparently, the news was not good. Not for her. Otherwise, why would the entire company hide their gaze? The third spoke. Naruto, two days ago the head of the Uchiha clan, Fugaku-san, presented us with an agreement drawn up and signed by the fourth Hokage. Marriage contract. According to it, you are obliged to marry one of the sons of Fugaku-san. It seemed to Naruto that the world around her froze. The blood drained from his face. Father, father made an agreement with the Uchiha marriage. She saw in front of her only the red and green beads of Elder Kohara's long earrings and clung and clung to them so as not to fall. I, she wheezed. Kohara placed a cup of tea in front of her, which the girl drained in one go, not paying attention to the temperature. Can I look at this agreement? Yes, we have a copy. Hamura handed over several sheets of paper stapled together. The lines ran before my eyes, the letters jumped. No, it won't work that way. The Uzumaki rubbed her face resolutely and drank another cup of tea. And she resolutely pulled herself together. Stop whining. Now her fate is being decided. She took up the document again, this time more soberly and meaningfully. A simple marriage contract without confirmation of the first wedding night and pregnancy after a certain period. She was lucky in this. Most likely, the father guessed or expected that the QB would have to be placed in it and wanted to play it safe. And also take care. Two days. Naruto bit her lip. Two days ago she turned seven full years old the age when a shinobi can be responsible for their actions and decisions. The contract did not specify the date of marriage. So why did Figaka-san choose to demand its fulfillment right now, without waiting for the bride, to grow up? What are the Uchiha's planning? Naruto, the third said softly. This is the will of the fourth Hokage, one of the last laws he adopted. I can't cancel it. But, if you say that you are against this marriage, I will find a way to help you leave it. Naruto looked up. The adults looked worried, serious, and a little guilty. It was their law that made the daughter of the fourth a renegade, an outcast, an outcast hated by everyone. The name of the Jinchuriki was hidden so that she would not be kidnapped by other countries until she was able to fend for herself. Naruto cowardly preferred not to think about other reasons. The ruling elite is on her side for now, and that's enough. For now. And then there will be a strong clan behind her that will not give her up to anyone. Not because she is so irreplaceable but because Uzumaki and Jinchuriki. A bitter taste appeared on the tongue. Naruto winced. Life is not a fairy tale, she realized that a long time ago. But still, it's a shame. Which of his sons did Fugaku-san propose? This time she managed to control her voice. Achiha Itachi. Danzo entered the conversation for the first time, boring into the girl with the gaze of his only eye. This is stated in the contract. Oh, yes, I see. I didn't pay attention to the most important thing. Your decision, Uzumaki Naruto? Remember, you can refuse. No, I agree. What? The third one jumped up. Naruto, are you sure? Yes. The girl spoke calmly, with a soft smile. And she tried to look resigned. Sooner or later, I will have to fulfill the terms of this agreement. You can't run away from him. Besides, there are many advantages for me in this marriage. 
and Uchiha Itachi is not the worst candidate for a husband. But pregnancy, Danzo rasped through his teeth. The desire of the past Jinchuriki to have a child led to the almost complete destruction of the village and the death of the fourth Hokage. No one is forcing me to give birth, date bail. Naruto snapped. She stood up and bowed. Thank you for wanting to help me. May I go? Go. The third released her. Naruto nodded and left the office, closing the door behind her. She quickly reached the house and locked herself. And only then did she realize that she was still clutching a copy of the hated contract. The girl angrily threw him into the corner and fell on the bed, burying her face in the pillow. Small, angry tears ran down my cheeks. Naruto, look how I can. Sasuke balanced on the tip of a tree branch on one leg, swaying dangerously. And at the same time he managed to perform deft movements with the sword. Little genius. You're doing great, Sasuke, come down. Naruto sank onto the grass. She had already completely managed to pull herself together and think everything through. Love marriages very rarely took place between shinobi, especially clan shinobi. Instead, they calculated everything, the compatibility of genomes, characters, views. In the case of clans, both territorial and monetary benefits were also calculated. Naruto had nothing to offer but herself, the QB within, and pure Uzumaki genetics. She was often told that she took after her father in character, but in blood and body she took after her mother. She was a real Uzumaki, with all the ensuing circumstances. That's a lot to say a walking weapon and few injutsu master. But few people already remembered the features of this scarlet clan. Marriage to Itachi will bring her many benefits. She will have a family, relatives. New status in Kanoha. She was always good at convincing herself. Sasuke sat down next to her. I heard about your marriage with Anai-san. He began. Naruto smiled and ruffled the unruly hair on top of her head. It's okay, Sasuke. Don't worry. The boy turned to her. Naruto, Itachi and Isen is not bad, don't think so. On the contrary, he is very good, strong, he can stand up for you. She will protect. I know, Sasuke. She still did not remove her hands from the warm crown of her head. How to explain to a child that, despite all her self-conviction, she still feels bad and offended. Neither status, nor money, nor power ever mattered to her. Naruto knew how, and was used to, relying only on herself. And, like all girls, she dreamed of love. Maybe not big, like her parents, to the point of pain, to death, but at least, at least. It's a shame when instead you are used blindly, like a soulless thing. It's especially offensive that it was Itachi, whom she was accustomed to consider practically a friend. He couldn't help but know about his father's initiative, so he agreed, which means... But look at it from the other side we will become real brother and sister. She winked more cheerfully. Date Bale. Sasuke, beaming, picked up. Naruto grinned, noticing that she was hardly pretending anymore. After all, she still has six months to prepare for the wedding. The Uchiha are a clan that honors traditions. There was a knock on the door, then again, and again. Naruto barely opened her eyes, yawning openly. Until the very morning... She studied new compositions of the poison, slow, almost undetectable by standard medical techniques. Judging by the master's malicious grin and his caustic comments, this could be useful to her in her family life. Naruto snorted at all the kind suggestions and sneered back. And I felt how the tension gradually released, how it became easier to breathe. In the end, nothing bad happened. Itachi is a great match for marriage. And marriage in the shinobi village is when a husband and wife may not see each other for months or meet only in the evenings, when they come home. One should not forget about the three heights, by which girls chose their grooms, and to which Itachi fully corresponded. He was tall for his age, which means he will become even taller. He was well trained and wealthy, the ideal groom that Naruto never aspired to. Besides, you can try to improve your relationship with your husband become friends. So by the end of the lesson, Naruto found real benefits from the forest bonds. And for the first time I thought what does Itachi himself think? 
What was his reaction? She was so used to the idea that he was aware of events. What if he also knew nothing about the agreement? Behind the door was a pretty dark-haired woman in a light dress and with a basket in her hands. Good morning, Naruto-chan. Will you let me in? Slowly, from sleep, the girl nodded and moved, letting the guest inside. My name is Uchiha Mikoto. I am the mother of Itachi and Sasuke. The woman introduced herself when the door slammed. Naruto Uzumaki Mikoto-san. Naruto bowed. May I offer you some tea? While the water was heating up, the girl managed to get herself in order, although she did not begin to braid her hair. Mikoto waited patiently in the kitchen, looking around. I brought homemade baked goods with me. She smiled and moved the basket. Thank you. Naruto took out her own mandatory item, for tea, from the cabinet. Help yourself. They sat in silence for a while, taking small sips. Naruto loved tea and knew about it. There might not be any food in the house other than rice with some carrots and onions, but several types of tea are a must. Red, floral summer bouquet. Jasmine, gentle and affectionate, restorative and soothing chamomile. And viscous, intoxicating ginger. I came to warn you that the wedding ceremony is scheduled for a week. There is almost undisguised sympathy in the woman's eyes. Naruto choked on another sip. How is this date bail? She was counting on the obligatory six months. What about the preparation? We prepared for a real traditional wedding for almost six months. It was necessary to send out invitations to all the guests in advance, to sew costumes for the bride and groom, and this was long and troublesome, because a woman's kimono is a real work of art. It is woven, sewn and painted by hand. It requires silver threads and gold and silver powder to decorate the fabric. Not that Naruto wanted to have such an outfit, but she desperately needed a reprieve to get used to the idea of marriage. Mikoto understood her because she took her hand. And the Uchiha's hand seemed unnaturally hot to the girl compared to her cold paw. We have everything ready. Since there are no relatives on your side, and a marriage contract has been concluded, you can do without a traditional engagement ceremony. And the kimono is sewn. I came to offer you help in preparing for the ceremony itself. I would be very grateful, the girl whispered in shock. Mikoto put down her cup, walked up to her interlocutor, and hugged her shoulders. She, pale as a sheet, looked at her with frightened, wide eyes. Naruto, I understand perfectly how you feel. Although I got married when I was much older than you, my marriage to Fugaku was also arranged by my parents. And I had no right to refuse. Itachi, she smiled a little helplessly. He's not a bad boy, just a little difficult. Understand, this is a difficult step for him too. I suspect he had no choice and used his last resort. Me? It sounded pitiful. Mikoto sighed and pressed the girl's head to her chest. Cry, she whispered. If you want. Naruto bit her lip. Her shoulders shook. But the eyes remained dry. Naruto sat under the window, closing her eyes. Uzumaki did not know how to be sad, and she never gave up. The first reaction, attributed to shock, has already passed, and she was able to soberly assess everything once again. Why did she whimper like a little girl? Love marriages are so rare. And, despite the circumstances, Hitachi offered her his name and his protection. He was still not a bad person and she will try to become a worthy support and support for him, as a good wife should doubt I was still a little frightened by the upcoming life in a new society, new responsibilities, but Naruto had already overcome so many difficulties in her life. She will cope this time too. The ceremony is tomorrow. Something heavy and living fell on my knee. Naruto opened her eyes and saw the sad face of the ninja dog. Hello, Pakin. Long time no see. The girl smiled and patted the knee kin behind the ears. Something happened? Or were you sent on reconnaissance? She narrowed her eyes slightly. Packin sighed resignedly. Naruto suspected that this dog was never in a good mood at all. For reconnaissance, he admitted. Can they come in to you? Of course, date bail. I'll be glad to see them. And then the Jonans of the Hidden Leaf Village appeared in the window. 
Hello? We didn't want to bother you, Ataki explained embarrassedly, scratching the back of his head. It's okay, come in. Naruto went to the lockers. Which tea should I brew for whom? It took some time to get comfortable in the Uzumaki's small living room, move the bed and create new furniture. Now Naruto understood why they brought a new guy into their company Tenzo. Using wood techniques, he provided the entire company with chairs. Naruto introduced herself to him, placed cups on the table. Enko pulled out the previously purchased sweets from the seal. In large, very large quantities. I knew that this was the best sedative for Uzumaki. And when everything calmed down, they settled down with cups and mugs in their hands, it sounded, How are you? How Ginma was going to drink tea with Simban in his mouth is a different story. Naruto smiled softly. It's fine now, she admitted. It used to be worse, much worse, but friends don't need to know about it. They were already worried, by the looks of it. Sorry, we couldn't come earlier, Anko apologized. We were subtly hinted that we should leave you alone for a while. Did they hint? Naruto was surprised. Who? Itachi Uchiha, Yado-san shuddered. The memories clearly did not please him. It's hard to argue with a full-fledged Sharingan, even for me. Ataki drawled. A wave of gratitude went through my heart. Maybe this marriage isn't such a mistake after all. He's in the clan now, getting ready, so we managed to slip here. Anko's eyes burned. The Kunoichi loved espionage, sabotage, and generally everything hidden in secret. Managed? Slip? It seems that my windows are always open, day bail. Naruto thought that she was missing something, something very important. The Jonans looked at each other and grinned. That didn't cancel out your fiancé on the roof. Asuma puffed on his cigarette. Itachi has been protecting you all this time, explained the kind Karinai, who had only recently joined the ranks of the Jonin. Even Gaisan couldn't distract him. Maybe it was an order from the head of the clan so that no one could harm the heir's bride or influence her decision. Anko began insinuatingly, smiling slyly and slyly shining in her eyes. But something tells me that there's something else going on here. Because one of the rank and file would be enough for security. Naruto blushed. She didn't know what to believe and what not. I didn't want to get my hopes up ahead of time. And it became clear who brought her and secretly put on the table a Mokuroku a list of relatives with an exact indication of the relationship, so that the girl would not make a mistake at the wedding banquet about who to call. The handwriting was elegant, but firm and confident. Itachi. The motives for the Uchiha's actions are unpredictable. Tenzo entered the conversation for the first time. He twirled the mask in his hands and looked at the girl with unblinking eyes, which made him look very much like an owl. Itachi's motives are doubly so. He always calculates the situation much further than ordinary people. His goals are so complex and distant that they are not easy to see. Come on, Tenzo. Anko waved him off. He's just a pedantic bore. His constantly imperturbable appearance makes me shiver. BRR. The girl shrugged her shoulders. It feels like he wasn't taught how to feel. Naruto couldn't help but smile. How different this was from what Kurama told her about the Uchiho's fiery temperament. The Jonans argued and told funny, amusing stories that had happened to them lately. Soon they were joined by Might Guy, who had escaped the clutches of the Ironine Hospital, where he ended up after the mission. And he brought with him several bottles of sake. Even an adherent of a healthy and stressful lifestyle sometimes allowed himself and his surroundings to relax. Or was it Hataki who influenced him that way? The company did not set out to get drunk or make the bride drunk. On the eve of the ceremony in the Uchiha clan, they won't get a pat on the head for this. Just take Naruto's worries away for a while, make her forget about it. The girl only drank a sip. She didn't like the sake, despite its softness. It still hit her head and stung her nose. I had to urgently remove the symptoms of intoxication by driving the fox chakra through the body. The others laughed and relaxed. Even Tenzu, who had been uptight earlier, smiled timidly. They couldn't come to the ceremony or banquet, they were still simple jonits, but they couldn't help but celebrate and support their friend. Guy amazed everyone with the power of youth. 
and probably, only thanks to his screams the neighbors have not yet come to the noise. No one wanted to mess with the best taijutsu master. Yadosan vowed to help drag the precious ficus. Anko, giggling, tried to explain to the blushing Naruto what awaited her on her wedding night. And she explained, with excerpts from a biology textbook for children. A relaxed Anko is a funny Anko. By midnight, it was decided to wind down the gathering. The Jonans dispersed. Fortunately, they were not very drunk. The still laughing Anko was dragged away by her boss, Ibiki, simultaneously wishing Naruto good luck and happiness in his marriage. The girl was so taken aback that she could only nod. And the chief torturer of Kanoha, with a wink, said that it would be easy to deal with her husband, especially if he helps at the request of this misunderstanding who does not know how to drink at all. He pointedly shook Anko, who was hanging on the chief's neck. Naruto remembered that everyone got no more than three sips of alcohol. What will she do if she drinks more? Marino Ibiki rolled his eyes and said that there were some things even he would rather not know. Hitaki was seen off by a sad packin. Naruto consoled the dog that there would always be sugar bones for him in her kitchen. Ninken noticeably cheered up, but Hitaki became depressed they didn't promise him anything. Tenzo promised to look after Senpai. The rest left on their own, quietly. Well, how quietly can Guy, who also cannot drink, move? Ginma and Yado went after him Uzumaki suspected that they were collecting dirt on the green beast. Kurinai left in the company of Asuma. The couple was quietly talking to each other about something. Without them, the apartment became somehow quiet, empty. Naruto sighed and walked along the wall of the bedroom living room. Tomorrow she will have to leave the apartment that has become her home forever. What awaits her? But despite all her worries, she slept that night without hind legs. They came for her in the morning. Naruto had done the cleaning by then, licking the apartment to a mirror shine. It will also come in handy if something doesn't work out or if Sasuke, when he grows up, needs his own living space, independent of the clan. Mikoto smiled welcomingly as Naruto bowed to her. Are you ready? I asked about everything. I was worried. And first of all, for my son. Of course, date Bayo. It seemed to Naruto that someone had frozen her emotions. The excitement has passed. She suddenly didn't care. She can handle it. Mikoto and the other women spent a long time washing it in the bathroom, scrubbing and rubbing until the skin turned red from her efforts. And I didn't want to hear about Naruto's independence. On the wedding day, this should be done by the mother of the bride, she said simply. Today I want to replace it for you. Naruto nodded silently, surrendering to the woman's skillful hands. She was seated on a special bench, and Mikoto began to carefully comb her hair, tangled after washing. With careful movements, she separated the strands, running the brush over each one, waiting for it to dry. Your hair is very beautiful, she said softly, interrupting the quiet singing that accompanied all her actions. Real golden wealth. Naruto dozed off, obedient to someone else's gentle touches. Fascinated by them. Never before had she felt such warmth. It was so maternal that it made you want to cry. My eyes stung suspiciously. The hairstyle, although seemingly simple, was in fact a complex interweaving of strands, supported by many hairpins and invisible hairpins. On top, Mikoto added a hair clip with three long pendants in the shape of jasmine flowers. Then it was the turn of the shiramaku the wedding kimono. Snow-white fabric, embroidered with thin silver threads, covered with skillful patterns. The girl reverently ran her hand over it a real work of art. Layer by layer, she immersed herself in its luxury. And when Mikoto, having finished, led her to a huge mirror, she was not surprised to see a completely different person there. Not Naruto Uzumaki. The bride of the heir to the Uchiha clan. In an instant, she became so grown up. There was a tightness in my chest. The calm shine of sky blue eyes framed by black eyelashes. The neckline of the kimono revealed the graceful curve of a thin neck. The sleeves, like water, flowed down to the floor, where they merged with the long tails of the robe. She herself almost did not exist. Horns of jealousy lay on top of the head, 
over which an unfamiliar woman from the clan immediately threw a snow-white Sinokakushi with a scarlet lining. According to tradition, this veil is a subtle hint that jealousy is a bad feeling, and you should not give in to it. A small purse and a small sheet sword were attached to the obi belt. Mikoto attached a fan to her belt in a special way so that it would open during the ceremony. For luck. The bride was ready. Naruto walked as if in a dream, having difficulty maintaining her balance under the heap of blankets and layers of elegant fabric. The wedding kimono was heavy and hindered movement. It was as if she had been prematurely put into a silk cage from which she could no longer escape. I wanted to scream, tear off these rags and run away, far, far away. Karama would definitely help her survive in the world outside the village, and she herself would not be lost as a few injutsu master. But Uzumaki could not do this. This is her pride and the pride of the Uchiha clan. You are very beautiful, Naruto, don't worry, Mikoto quietly whispered to her. The ceremony was held at the Uchiha clan temple. Mikoto has left, she will be present at the ceremony as the mother of the groom. Naruto had to walk alone along a short path and enter the room, thereby confirming her consent. The girl sighed, straightened her shoulders, trying to forget about the weight of the kimono at least for a moment. She walked carefully so as not to fall, which Chakra helped her greatly with. It wasn't enough to disgrace yourself like that. Even though no one was visible nearby, that didn't mean the Uchiha weren't watching her. The groom appeared immediately after her, when Naruto had just stood to the left of the altar and stood to the right. Wearing a black hakama with the Uchiha crest, Itachi looked many years older than his age. Full of restrained dignity and pride, with a calm face. Naruto felt her stupid heart, despite everything, beating like crazy, trying to jump out of her chest. To distract herself, she began to look around with interest and caution. She had never been inside a temple before. According to the rules, only the closest relatives and friends from both sides could attend the ceremony. But the space behind Naruto's shoulders was empty she had no parents and no one whom she could invite. Opposite her sat Makoto and Figaku, a stern man with a protruding jaw. And another guy, a little older than Itachi himself, with hair sticking out in different directions and his terribly penetrating eyes with which he literally pierced the bride. Naruto answered him with a direct look with a hidden challenge, and the stranger grinned. Even the corners of Itachi's lips twitched, he noticed the silent duel. The priest and Miko came out to the altar, the bride and groom bowed to the temple and sat down in the places prepared in advance. And the cleansing ritual began. At that moment, the girl understood why the wedding kimono is made so heavy and dense. It resembled a cocoon. Outside, a thunderstorm could be raging, an unfamiliar groom could be found, and the monotonous prayer of a priest could be heard. But inside it was calm and cozy, as if in a protective shell. Cups of sake were placed in front of Naruto, and he was supposed to take three sips from each. The Uzumaki barely restrained herself from wrinkled her nose. Well, she didn't like the sake, what can she do? but she still drank what she was supposed to and immediately activated her chakra, driving away the rapid intoxication. Her voice sounded evenly, pronouncing the oath of allegiance, and Naruto promised to herself that she would definitely remain herself. He will not allow the clan to remake itself. Two oaths rose to the ceiling of the temple at once loud and silent, wordless, but both filled with power. Despite her almost complete apathy, her hand shook mercilessly as she put the ring on her now husband's finger. At some point she was afraid that she would drop it altogether, but this, thank Kami, did not happen. Naruto quietly took a breath. The slight squeeze Itachi gave her gave her strength. And the ring no longer seemed so heavy, it no longer burned her skin with fire. They stood up. In front of her, Naruto saw only the back of Itachi walking ahead. Smooth, strong, confident. He doubted nothing, having made a decision, he went to the end. So is she. They were photographed for the wedding album, after which Mikoto took Naruto away to change his clothes. Uchikake is the second kimono that was supposed to be worn after the ceremony. Black, embroidered with gold threads and a gold belt. Naruto allowed herself to be changed, realizing that she could not have done it alone. Thank you. 
all her feelings poured out into one short word. Mikoto smiled and adjusted the clip in her hair. Well, it wasn't all that scary. She stroked the girl's cheek. Perhaps you think that the good of my sons is above all else for me. This is true. But now you are part of my family. My daughter. The apathy receded, as if with a jolt the Uzumaki was thrown out of half-sleep into a bright reality. She swallowed a heavy lump in her throat. Thank you, Mikoto-san. Remember, now you are Naruto Uchiha. The woman briefly hugged her and immediately smoothed out the invisible folds on the elegant kimono. Let's go to. There were several tables located in the large party hall of the Uchiha mansion. Behind one of them, on a raised platform, Naruto was already waiting for Itachi. She sat down next to him and folded her hands. And then I felt a light touch of cool fingers on my palm. Itachi did not look at the bride, looking at the first guest to rise an old man with a long beard, probably the elder of the clan. But the girl felt that now all his feelings and care were directed towards her. And she closed her eyelashes for a brief moment, thanking him. Perhaps this marriage will not be a mistake, as she thought at the very beginning. Together with Itachi, they cut the cake and thanked the guests for coming. Without horns in a veil, the head seemed light, despite the hairstyle. Naruto accepted the congratulations of other clan heads and with dignity withstood their appraising glances, which burned right through her. Now she is Naruto Uchiha, but, like Naruto Uzumaki, she will not allow herself to be weak. She can handle it. Her mantra, her spell, which worked. The celebration continued until late at night. Sasuke was sent to bed at ten o'clock. He really wanted to follow his example. Her eyes were drooping, she wanted to yawn uncontrollably, but Naruto invigorated herself every time with the Kyuubi's chakra. A burning fusion of hatred, rage and sincere care, running through the channels, drove away fatigue. And it was funny to watch how censors from other clans and Hyuga twitched when the fox's chakra flared up for a second. Naruto saw Hayashi Hyuga secretly activate the Byakugan, and each time he was left with nothing the girl's chakra was consistently blue and calm. No wonder she put so much effort into control. Another thanks, Itachi's parents, guests, and the enlarged Uchiha family went to see off the guests, presenting them with memorable gifts the same sweets with a bouquet of flowers for everyone. The newlyweds once again bowed to the older generation, thanked them for their care, after which Itachi took Naruto by the hand and led him somewhere outside the mansion. They built us a house in the distance, on the border of the clan, he explained quietly as they walked along narrow paths between the hydrangea and mallow bushes. Tired? He stopped and turned to his wife. A little date bail. Naruto yawned, covering herself with her palm. Then I think it's better to do this. Itachi picked her up in his arms. A convulsive sigh involuntarily escaped from the girl's chest. Don't be afraid, I won't harm you. He whispered in her ear and rushed forward. Naruto closed her eyes and leaned against her husband's chest, listening to the booming beating of his heart. It feels so good in these tight hugs. Right. A small two-story mansion stood away from all the clan's buildings, almost in the forest itself. There was no fence around. Naruto only had time to notice a small pond lined with rocks at the edges in front of the house before Itachi pushed the shoujo aside and carried her inside. The darkness was uninhabited, smelling of cleaning products and lavender from moths, which gave the former Uzumaki a terrible headache. She promised herself to make another remedy, from rose hips, so as not to smell this cloying, strong smell. Itachi carefully lowered his burden on the threshold of their shared bedroom. On the windowsill there was a bouquet of the very hydrangeas they ran past. The large bed was made with fresh, still crisp, linens. On top lay a beautiful scarlet blanket with funny tassels at the ends. Naruto was surprised to recognize it as the one she had often looked at in the store. But she couldn't afford it. And it wasn't even a matter of money, they had it. She just felt that such an expensive thing would look out of place in her apartment. And now, she turned to Itachi, who was carefully watching her reaction. I thought that you weren't used to sleeping on a futon and so, he waved his hand. Naruto bit her lip, for some reason she wanted to cry. She was completely unsettled by today's experiences. 
It's okay. Tomorrow everything will be back to normal. Thank you, De Bale, she said quietly. Itachi nodded in acceptance. Go to the bathroom first. You are tired. In the bathroom, a new shock awaited her a soft blue kimono, embroidered with snow-white flowers. The Uchiha mentally groaned, slapping her forehead. She leaned her burning face against the cold tile. She completely forgot about her wedding night. The bride was supposed to change clothes again, put on makeup and dance for her husband the dance with fans, which the girl had been learning all last week. Fortunately, the shinobi had no problems with memory and coordination. Then there was supposed to be a foot massage at the thought of Itachi's body stretched out in front of her, Naruto's cheeks flushed a poppy color. Adrenaline drove away fatigue and made my heart beat faster. And then, Naruto flushed again. Now even Anko's childishly naive explanation seemed depraved. Mikoto-san knew her son like no one else. She knew that he would let his wife go to the bathroom first, and in such a simple way she reminded him of her. Responsibilities Naruto rinsed off in the shower, forgetting to untangle the strands of her hair. She completely forgot about everything while she cautiously approached the blue kimono. She is quite capable of pulling off this outfit on her own. The cool fabric gently slid over the smooth skin, fitting tightly, emphasizing all the curves of the figure. Before, Naruto didn't even know she had breasts. Small, but elastic and high, it temptingly lifted the thin fabric. The girl blushed. No, she will not wear makeup, under no circumstances ever. Moreover, he doesn't know how. In front of the bedroom door, she slowed down a little to gain courage. She took a deep breath, clutched the unfortunate silk fan in her hand, and only then opened the door. Itachi sat on the bed, still wearing his traditional hakama. I was waiting for her. Naruto walked with her head held high, despite the fact that her cheeks were burning. Naruto? There was indescribable surprise in the voice. It's a tradition. She smiled, opening her fan. At one moment... Itachi found himself next to her, squeezing her shoulders with his hands. Strong, almost painful. Made me look you in the eyes. Naruto again drowned in the black pools. Don't, he asked quietly. Neither you nor I are ready yet. Let's wait, because this is not required of us. We will still have time, Naruto. The girl shuddered. How? How did he guess how much effort it took for her to offer herself so shamelessly? even to her own husband. She pressed herself against Itachi, absorbing his strength, his warmth with her whole body. Strong arms grabbed her back. Her nose was buried in heavy strands of hair. Itachi took in her scent for a second, then pulled away. I'll go to the bathroom, and you lie down. Rest, today was a hard day. And he left without looking back. For which Naruto was sincerely grateful to him. She threw off her kimono with a jerk, wanting more than anything to burn the hated rag. Stupid traditions. And she plopped down on the bed, furiously wrapping herself in a scarlet blanket, turning her back to the door. Itachi returned twenty minutes later. He turned off the light, lay down next to him and became quiet. Asleep. But Naruto couldn't sleep. The hairpins that she thoughtlessly left in her hair pricked terribly, as if she was lying on the buttons but she tried not to move so as not to disturb Itachi. Then, a little later, when her husband falls asleep, she will get out of bed and take out these unfortunate hairpins. In the meantime, we'll have to wait. Suddenly, one of the piercing points disappeared, followed by another. Naruto was surprised to feel how deft fingers removed the accessible hairpins from her hair. She turned to her husband in surprise. He didn't need light to distinguish the hairpins. The Sharingan blossomed in her eyes, and the girl watched in fascination the black pattern on the scarlet background. Sit down. Itachi stood up himself. You're too tense. Naruto obediently turned her back to him, not knowing how to behave with him. As with a friend, he is no longer a friend. As with my husband, he himself refused to follow all traditions. The guy carefully took out the hairpins, affectionately, almost tenderly and Naruto, tense as a string, gradually relaxed. These touches, they excited and calmed at the same time. 
Everything will be fine with us. Itachi whispered in his ear. Just be yourself, Naruto. A cascade of hair fell down her back, separating the girl from the heat of the half-naked Uchiha. Naruto moaned blissfully, relief spreading through her muscles. Shinigami, how good, date Bayo. She rolled her eyes, shaking her head. Itachi took her hands and turned her towards him. Naruto was wary. Her husband looked seriously. He was testing. Black eyes saw right through her. The Uchiha took the girl's palm and kissed it in the very center. Naruto shuddered, her eyes involuntarily widening. Like a lightning strike. Itachi raised his eyes without taking his eyes off his palm. I will be a good husband to you. He said clearly, separately, his eyes sparkling. As long as you remain faithful to me. Naruto leaned towards him. I will be a good wife to you. She vowed in response. As long as you remain faithful to me. And in these words there is a warning and an unspoken threat. They are both too proud to forgive the other for rumors appearing behind their back. And they wanted an ordinary, normal life too much to carry out military operations at home. This was their common, strongest, most truthful oath. Real. Itachi chuckled, laying back down on the pillow and pulling Naruto with him. The girl found herself in his arms, fidgeting, making herself more comfortable. Sleep, Naruto Uchiha. There were notes of pleasure in the voice. Naruto chalked it up to her overly tired mind. We have nowhere to rush tomorrow. M? The girl raised her heavy head. The dream came in waves, took over. She clung to reality with all her strength. Tomorrow our honeymoon begins. An invisible smile was heard. Hokage-sama gave me leave for two weeks in connection with my marriage. Ah, uh, okay. Naruto yawned heartbreakingly and again buried herself in the Uchiha's chest. There was no strength left even for embarrassment. Get some sleep, date bail. There was a deep chuckle from above and the newlyweds fell asleep almost simultaneously. The crazy day has come to an end.